I think in the long run, the answer is no. You can't meaningfully stop online copyright infringement at any acceptable cost. Um, so what do you do then? And, well, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, so let me actually just, just give say a, a quick word about why. Um, what we've had so far are arguments mostly about blocking or limiting or removing access to publicly available and usually commercial distribution of uh, of content, so you know, file lockers and uh, public BitTorrent trackers and that sort of thing, and that's difficult. But with international cooperation, it's the kind of thing you can ultimately do. Um, but there's a, a paper I think back in 2002 by a couple of Microsoft engineers called "The Dark Net and the Future of uh, Content Distribution" that points out that uh, you know, ultimately, the problem as bandwidth increases and the ability to copy and storage space increases. Um, is going to be private copying and sharing, you know, not totally public sharing, uh, of the kind that traditionally has been sort of unregulated, right? I mean, so uh, the kind of industry may not like it that people will let their friends in their dorm or whatever, you know, rip copies of the CDs they've bought or, you know, make mixtapes for each other. But by and large, there has not been an effort to regulate that directly because it hasn't been on the kind of scale that, um, that makes it worthwhile. Um, as we move to uh, a, a sort of an internet where uh, you have people with social social graph defined access to cloud drives that have a lot of compressed or encrypted data, um, and the sort of speed of transmission between those drives becomes uh, faster, it will effectively, I think, be impossible to prevent larger scale, though not strictly public sharing. Um, without essentially sacrificing the privacy of, of digital communication. Um, and I think that's, that's just not, a, not a, a cost that's acceptable. 